welcome to a special episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. This is a little different than our normal episode. Nick, it's summertime right now, and the no people out shit. The people out there, it's too hot to go outside. <laughs> it is too hot. So we thought we'd give you a list of some movies you can stay cool inside and watching. Now, what is your forte? What's your favorite type of movie? Oh, you know this. It's action movies. Action. So I was thinking, Nick, could you give me a list of five solid action movies to watch indoors this summer? This summer? Yeah. First, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Okay. Now that movie is drenched in summertime. That movie even starts with a song with the lyrics that begin with hot time, summer in the city. What, uh, <laughs> what year did it come out? 1995. Who's in it? Bruce Willis. Okay. Jeremy Irons and Samuel L. Jackson is the third Die Hard film. And that one and the fourth Die Hard, both very good summer action movies to watch because the first two, let's face it, you want to watch those during Christmas. Of course. And I say the fourth one as well because that's a very underrated 4th of July movie to watch. This is that the movie, one with uh, Justin Long? Yes. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, with, uh, oh my God, the fucking bitch, Justin Long. <laughs> the fucking bitch. <laughs> but Die Hard with a Vengeance takes place in summertime in New York City with John McClane has to, uh, elude a very, a very scary terrorist from, that may or may not be from his past that's, uh, sending him on a gauntlet of, uh, deadly games throughout, uh, Manhattan and whatnot. Okay. And, and you can just tell it's a really... It's a really warm time out there. That whole the whole movie takes place over the course of a day. Damn. Who plays the uh, villain? Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. Okay. Okay. That's great. That's great. Who directed it? John McTiernan, who did the first one. Okay. Yes. Uh, very worth checking out. I've got a second one for you. Oh, yeah. Number two? A little similar in the vein of Die Hard because the first one technically is also a Christmas movie. Okay. This one, Rambo First Blood Part 2. Rambo First Blood Part 2. Part 2. Okay. Part 2 Picks up after a few years after the first one. Rambo is in jail, but he gets recruited to go save missing POWs okay. back in Vietnam. And there's even a line in the movie where Marshall Murdoch says, nothing like the damn heat, right? Never felt anything like it. It's a very warm looking movie because it's basically the summertime and Rambo has to go back damn. to what he calls home, to what most people know as hell. And that is Vietnam to rescue some POWs. The movie even came out in May. And my movie all these action boys be sweating and my movie brain works, uh, works, works in differently than, you know, the calendar does, whereas summertime okay. is technically from late June to uh, late September. Yeah, me summertime lasts from as soon as May hits to as soon as August finishes. That's because good. that's the summer movie season, right? Summer movie season. So Rambo good First point. Blood good Part 2, a fantastic continuation of the Rambo movies, even if it got a little silly. Well, let's face it, it got a lot silly. Fair enough. It really did. But that is a fantastic one for summer viewing. Uh, what year did that come out? 85. 85. Who directed that? George P. Cosmatos, who would go on to maybe sort of kind of direct Cobra and okay. also maybe sort of kind of direct Tombstone. All right. All I right. say maybe sort of kind of because that's a whole nother story in all itself. Right. <laughs> so what about number three? Number three. Number three is another sequel, actually. Okay. And, uh, We're getting this, a lot of sequels here. And this is the movie that prompted me. Maybe I'll send you a picture to show to show for. But this movie prompted me as a, as a kid to grow my hair out because I wanted my hair to be just like his. I've been on your old Facebook. Yeah. Oh. Well. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I wanted my hair to be long, just like Tom Cruise's in Mission Impossible Two. Now, Mission Impossible Two is directed by John Woo, and if you know who John oh, Woo is, oh, that's the one he did. Okay. Yeah, you're in for a whirlwind of just stylish, insane, over the top, like uh, this is like blast him up action uh, with a lot of silly melodrama <laughs> sprinkled into <laughs> it but that whole movie is just such a it's like the sun is blaring down on them as they're just, as he's just riding this motorcycle shooting up bad guys and whatnot and it's in slow motion too he's just he's riding this thing around like he's a ballerina mm. almost it's tom cruise is riding motorcycle tom cruise oh my yeah, god doing everything basically yeah, he's introduced in the movie climbing okay. a mountain with no safety harness Oh, shit. Yeah, he's just like, damn, at, this guy is cool. I bet just, he flies fighter planes in the <laughs> universe. But Mission Impossible 2, Mission Impossible 1, I'm not personally the biggest fan of. That's okay. a taut little like espionage thriller. You want a dumber kind of action movie where uh, the Mission Impossible movies didn't really, you know, find their forte until maybe about the fourth one. Okay. 
Uh, they were still kind of figuring themselves out because they were bringing on different directors each project. This one is no exception. This one's a personal favorite of mine. Sure. I know this one gets a lot of flack. It's usually considered the worst one, but don't listen to them, all right? <laughs> this one's fun. Check this one out. Mission it's, Impossible 2. It's a good one for the summer. So who's the villain in this? Who's the... Dugray Scott. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dugray Scott, if you don't know who he is, he was uh, he was originally supposed to be Wolverine. Really? Yeah. Over, over Hugh Jackman? Mm -hmm. Wow. And speaking of Hugh Jackman, uh, fourth movie. Fourth movie. Well, fourth movie quick. leading up. I'm going to change it up a little bit. This is an action movie. It's a bit of a different one, but um, this is a fantastic one to watch more during the summer than Halloween. Van Helsing. Van Helsing? Van Helsing. This movie is a blast, in my opinion. It's, this is the one based on the doctor from Dracula, right? Uh, Dracula? Dracula. Dracula. Yeah. yeah. Damn Dracula Black. Damn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dracula? Yes, this movie, directed by Steven Summers, has Van Helsing as action hero James Bond kind of working for the Vatican doctor. Not even a doctor. He's just Gabriel Van Helsing. He doesn't have guns. He just has crossbows. Is that he it? He has a crossbow that fires like a fucking machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Have you not seen Van Helsing? I have. I don't think I've, I've seen all of it. I oh, think I've seen part so, of it. Uh, it's I think so it was on, fun. I think it was on Tubi at one point. Have I was you seen, watching. You've seen The Mummy, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. director. Yeah. Really? So you know what you're getting into if you've seen The Mummy? <laughs> oh, okay. But Steven Summers clearly has a love for like these universal horror monsters and yes, whatnot yeah. you know he made the mummy the mummy's also a fantastic summer watch if you're interested in that but van helsing i think is a very underrated one i think uh over time people have kind of given it a lot more chances thankfully okay. so definitely check that one out it's got hugh jackman and kate beckinsale off of underworld fame and oh. they just go up against all these <laughs> really wacky it did these interesting takes on these classic monsters like a, a werewolf for instance uh, Frankenstein's monster. Okay. Durac Richard Roxburgh is in it. He plays Dracula. Is there like a central villain or is it all? Yeah, it's Dracula. Oh, Dracula's Dracula is the Dracula. villain. Okay. And he can turn into basically Goliath from Gargoyles. Okay. Which is kind of awesome. That's pretty sick. It's, uh, what dre it's drenched in CGI. Uh, but a lot of it is very worth checking out, especially in comparison to today's CGI, where we've become so numb to it that looking back at it now, it's just like, this was 2004? Wow, they, they poured money into this, and it still looks pretty good. So 2004, this came out. Yes. Shit, okay. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Nick, number five, another last one. What top summer blockbuster you This is essential. Okay. It, it, it's speed. Oh, it's that, speed now this with one Keanu I know. Reeves as just this daredevil cop who has to get on this bus that Dennis Hopper, who plays a crazy, who plays the one of the best 90s action villains ever, yeah. has rigged with a bomb. Oh, And okay. if the bus... Yeah, I've seen goes this. over 50 miles an hour. The bomb is activated. If it goes under 50, it detonates. So Dennis, <laughs> so Keanu Reeves has to play this cat and mouse game with Dennis Hopper. He boards the bus and has to save the day, essentially. Oh, my God. And maybe he meets the love of his life on the bus, too. Yeah. So this one I know this one I know well, because uh, this would inspire two sci fi movies. If I remember, uh, Sandra Bullock would be coming on this one year after Demolition Man, if Correct. I remember correctly. And Keanu Reeves would have Johnny Mnemonic given a bigger budget because of the success of Speed. That's correct. Two weird sci-fi movies that directly relate to Speed. I Speed, came out, Speed came out in the summer of 94. It was a huge success. So there's a lot of, there is, it's, so a lot of people really attribute like Speed to being one of the absolute biggest summer blockbusters ever. Damn. And so, it's, it's set, is it set during the summer as well? Is it I don't I want to say it is. It, I don't know I'd if say, that... From what I remember, it's hot as shit. It looks hot as shit in that bus. It's L.A. Hey, so. <laughs> it's L.A., so it's probably always just, like, stanky warm. <laughs> but, uh, man, you can tell me. You're from yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. But it's... Um, Oh, what an essential action movie of the 90s. Probably the best action movie of the 90s. Speed, you like think? Given. Yeah, Damn. I, I want to say that. Those are my personal five essentials. Let me know down in the comments if I missed any. Thank you for watching. We'll do more countdowns of essential genre movies in the future. Nick, thank you for your knowledge about action movies. You're welcome. All right. Bye, guys. Peace. Peace.